Happy Wednesday, everybody. How are we doing? Are we doing good? Lovely to see you all here today. I am exhausted. It has been a very, very long day where I've been balancing a lot of video projects at work. And to be honest, as soon as this live show is over, I'm getting my work laptop back out and I'm going to be editing way into the evening. It's just been one of those days. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Miles Dyer. Welcome to Miles Dyer Live. We meet up this time every Wednesday. And if you're watching on replay on demand, well, yeah, we meet up this time every week because it's whenever you want to watch it for the week afterwards. Um, this is a hangout show where we sometimes have fun with quizzes, uh, talking about maybe the latest movies or games. And other times we have more serious talks. So I think today is going to be one of those serious talks. Uh, we talk about world events, um, we can talk about life hacks, um, but it's always a good mix. And uh, the last Wednesday of every month, which I believe is, wow, it's going to be next Wednesday, which is going to be an interesting one for a, a reason I'll get to in a bit. Um, but it's, yeah, it's it's all streamable 24-7. That is right, Cali Time Cats. Um, so yeah, I want to welcome anyone that is new. Um, I hope that you'll subscribe, ring the bell and uh, hit the like button if you haven't already. Um, and today we are talking about being single. And it doesn't mean that if you're in a relationship, you can't be a part of this conversation because before you were in a relationship, you were once single. Unless, well, no, let's not even go there. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so we're going to be talking all about that um, because today is Singles Awareness Day, something I was unaware of. Uh, as in, I was aware of singles. I was unaware of Singles Awareness Day until today when planning the show. And then we'll also uh, be talking about, you know, just overall Valentine's Day, which was yesterday, um, the importance of self-love, self-care, um, and the fact that, you know, being alone is not the same as being lonely. So we'll be looking at those distinctions. But as always, we kick off the show with just some updates that I've had going on uh, and things that have been on my mind. Um, and <laughs> I was chatting to some people beforehand. Um, I don't even know how it came about. Oh, no, I, I was talking about like what international days it was today because there were actually quite a lot that I found. And someone said, oh, did you know that actually today is International Hippos Day? Now, I've not verified this and I haven't changed the topic of the show to be about hippos, so we don't have to worry there. Um, but already, um, <laughs> already people in the chat are putting jokes about hippos, which um, I might get around to reading at some point. Um, but first things first, I want to say a huge shout out to Mark, who has just <laughs> gifted one membership uh, to Joshua Taylor. So Joshua Taylor, welcome. And as you can see down there, you get a little star on screen now next to your name when you are a member. Uh, that was something I only noticed at the end of last week. So um, that is pretty cool. And for those of you that don't know what membership is, uh, for as little as a coffee a month, you become a member of the channel, you get a cool icon of the globe next to your name, which changes colour over time. And you also unlock lots of great emojis that is already being used very well in the chat. And last week, we only just unlocked another five. So people are, um, yeah, enjoying that lots and lots and lots. Um, so yeah, well done uh, for Mark and getting Joshua uh, a star. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I've got a list of things to talk about here. Um, so first things first, Friday in two days time on February the 17th, 2023, it is going to be my birthday. Um, I have to admit that last year, um, it was the first birthday that made me go, oh wow, Oh, wow. And kind of scared me a little bit. And I know that people that are older than me are going to laugh, but you probably relate to it some some bit uh, because last year I turned 35 and it was like, it just felt like going over the hill towards 40 and I'm going to be turning on Friday 36. Um, but, you know, it's a great time for reflection and um, the where I was when, you know, a year ago, it's incredible how far even this show has come. I mean, just look how great this show looks now compared to a year ago. And for those that haven't seen, uh, just go on my Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Miles Dyer. Look at the pin post. There are two photos that show uh, a great comparison of, of where I've been. 
So this does mean that on Friday, I'm going to be off work, and then I'm going to be off work until the end of the month, uh, which means two things. Firstly, uh, it means that on Friday, uh, I'll have a bit of free time uh, before hosting uh, with Brian PSVR without parole in the evening. So I might do a, an extra live show if you're up for it. I thought maybe we could do some party games or something. I'll have to see how I'm doing for time because I might be going to the movies with a friend. I wanted to go and see the new Ant-Man movie, um, but the reviews haven't been that great. And it's one of those things that uh, maybe I could just wait wait a month until um, uh, it's out on Disney+. Plus. Um, but uh, <laughs> I love this. Uh Time to switch. Wait, let me find it. Time to switch to a double edgy uh, safety razor, dude. Dude, I, uh, I, uh, <laughs> do, you, do I shave my ears? I haven't yet, although I do find the occasional one. But yeah, Jackbox could be great. I'm wondering how many Jackbox games are safe for streaming. Um, I'll have to have a think about that. It's been a while since I've played them, but yeah, <laughs> we could do the word game, but. I'd like to do something a bit different uh, on my birthday. So, yeah, there may be an extra live live show on Friday. So um, keep your eyes out for that on my social media. I will definitely announce it. But at the very least, I'll be hosting uh, PSVR uh, without parole games cast live that evening. Uh, so that is all, all very, very exciting. Um, that is true. They do have the settings in Jackbox. That's good. All right. We could, uh, yeah, we could do that. And I know uh, earlier month uh, before, well, it, it, this is for the Marvel movies and Disney Plus. So far, they've come out to Disney Plus only a month later, but that they might change that because they're realizing it's having an impact on just like me. You know, I'm not going to pay a huge amount of money if the reviews aren't great. I'll just wait for it on Disney Plus. But um, thank you very much. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, and I was thinking about today talking about birthdays and, you know, reflecting, but. It's a couple of days out and, you know, I can always talk about it on Friday. So that's that. Um, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you who have joined me on this journey. Something I often say to friends and family when I write birthday cards. Uh, and I've got a few birthday cards already dropped off here uh, that I've put here so I don't forget to open them. Um, but uh, I am uh, always talking about completing another journey around the sun. And so I want to thank you all for joining me on this uh, lap that I am hopefully about to complete but you know you never know <laughs> I don't plan on going anywhere in the next two days um, cool next up uh, there is some really big news uh, happening uh, that you are all pretty well aware of and that is that PlayStation VR 2 is less than a week away now it's it's seven sleeps away which is absolutely remarkable i remember speculating about it over a year and a half ago we are now so so close to psvr2 and this will have implications for the channel because i will be on my i say that, that there's saturday streams at the moment for gaming but i might change it to weekend streams so i have a bit more flexibility because sometimes i might want to be doing something on a saturday night sometimes um you know a s sunday will be just a better day so it might be good to just mix it up a little bit um so there's that but it does mean that i'm going to start live streaming a lot of um psvr2 titles uh i'm going to do one a week um but there's a lot more than one a week's worth uh, to be getting through so I'll have to have a, a little think about that but there are a few things uh, that I want to talk about uh, regarding this uh, but firstly there's a few comments that have just come in about what I was talking about um, Karina oh on PSVR 2 I just got my shipping email Whoop. Um, <laughs> I haven't the faintest idea what next Wednesday is yeah <laughs> um Capt F Castle, I'm approaching 50, but a minor recent change in lifestyle. Just a couple of gym visits a week and drinking a little more water means I'm feeling better than a decade ago. That's amazing. Well, something I take is um, these heights, um, which um, I'm trying to get the creator on the show at some point. So I might take a photo of this and uh, send it to them and ask them if they want to come on. Um, I take a couple of them a day. It makes me feel great. They've also just released some probiotics, which I've never taken before. Does anyone take probiotics? I'd love to know um, if people have good good experiences with it. Um, but anyway, <laughs> do they make you taller? No, they haven't. 
but um have a look um really interesting and uh, i i have felt better for it i've, I've been doing uh, it for a while now um so on psvr2 uh there are a couple of things that are worth mentioning now last week you may remember that i was doing something in my living room that was driving me a bit up the wall and uh oh wow i can't find the video file that's uh interesting um one second here we go i'm just going to drag this on the screen and remind me to unmute myself because when i do it this way it normally mutes me but this is what i played last week Yep, it was an absolute mess. I was trying to build this um, driving simulator rig for Gran Turismo. And yeah, it was, um, it was a mess. It was a mess. However, uh, let me just make sure it works now. Okay, you can still hear me. That's good. That's good. I've been very, very, <laughs> very uh, keeping my eyes on that. Um, so that went well. Well, I've now put it all together and it looks like this. And uh, it looks really nice. It's um, really comfy. Uh, you can see the camera stand there. Uh, and you can see on the far left there, uh, my PSVR uh, headset holder. Um, but that's all going to change soon. But um, yeah, it's all been set up. Uh, it's really, really nice. Um, and I'm having a great time uh, using this for uh, Gran Turismo on the uh, flat screen. And actually, uh, some of you mentioned um, seeing on my Instagram me sharing a video about it. Um, let me uh, let me actually... I'm just putting it onto my computer now so I can uh, show you it. Um it's going to be uh, vertical, so it won't look that great. Great question. Would you face it away from the TV so the cord is behind you? I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference, but it's a, it's a great thing. I, the console on the floor is giving me anxiety. See, I normally keep it on the desk, but to be honest, on the desk, it's got more of an issue. Um, but yeah, I, I, can, I can understand that. Um, this was uh, me last night uh, doing a time trial on it. And I was having such a great time. Um, it feels great when you're racing on a flat screen. But in a week's time, I'm going to be in the car in virtual reality and uh, racing with up to, I think, 19 other friends. Uh, so it's going to be really good and I've been practicing a lot getting the hang of you know racing and knowing when to accelerate and when to brake uh, and I'm having a really 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 good time with it so there's that but there is something else that I know many of you are going to love and hit the like button now to give me some strength if you haven't already and hello to everyone who's just joined this is what you are all waiting for when it comes to PSVR 2. I am not good with horror games. So, how do you think I'm going to do with this next week? Well, never mind because it didn't even play the video. <laughs> Which made it seem a bit spookier, right? It made it seem a bit spookier. Uh, that wasn't working. So, uh, yeah, the void. The void. Um, as, as, as many of you will know, that um, Resident Evil um, uh, Village, uh, the VR version, is going to be out uh, with the launch of PSVR 2. Um, and uh, I'm actually going to get the trailer. I'm going to get the trailer now because it is really, really good. Um, right, here we go. Right, I'm just I'm just downloading it now. Uh, I'm just going to download a, a lower quality version because clearly the 4K version was too much to ask. Too much to ask. You haven't watched uh, that trailer to avoid any spoilers. Well, yeah, that was the thing. I actually got it at launch. 
uh, which was over a year ago now, which is remarkable. And then I stayed away from it. Um, but um, yeah, great. It's going to download it. It's going to take 20 seconds. Miles even too scared to play the trailer. Um, well, what I'll do is I, I am going to play the trailer, but if anyone doesn't want spoilers, I'll say look away. Um, that's interesting that you think you're going to be more okay with RE8. Um, you know, we, we, we will have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see indeed. Anyway, let's give this another go um, and see how we get on. Hopefully this works. So look away if you don't want any spoilers. That's better. It's going to be amazing. The graphics are going to look great. It's going to be more immersive because there's no longer the screen door effect, which is where you kind of see the pixels up close on the screen. It's going to be very clear. It's going to be very clear. Now, uh, as was already alluded to earlier, um, some people have already um, been charged for their PSVR 2, which comes out next week, which is very, very exciting. We are seven sleeps away. Um... And uh, in preparation for the launch, uh, actually on Friday, I've got my parents coming over because it's my birthday. They want to come say hey. Um, but also in my living room, I'm actually going to be rearranging everything. So where you see the television, I'm actually going to be moving that to the other side to where um, you would normally see my posters uh, and the chair. Um, I don't know if actually I've got a photo here I can quickly show you because some of you will have seen the back wall in my living room with all the really really great posters of um uh like final fantasy the last of us uh here we go so yeah that's the the back wall in my living room so this is actually where the tv is going to be now and the couch is going to be moved to uh a different corner um so uh yeah um it's gonna be pretty impressive do you think it will arrive on wednesday uh on the wednesday my feeling is that the twenty, you know, the twenty second to the is it the twenty seventh the window? I can't remember what it says on the order form. Um, that um, I think that is just general corporate protection. You know, they can't guarantee when things will arrive. My feeling is that they will be sent out the day before. I, I have no reason to believe that. Um, it's it's a complete guess, but I, I would think that they would do it so that you know as many people as possible can. Uh, celebrate it um, but there's something else I've got to say everyone and I've got to be really careful how I say this because um, you, you'll understand um, so I'm gonna say something and you're gonna have to listen very very carefully um, I'm gonna have some very exciting things to show you in the next week um, and the best way I can explain this is today I cancelled my PSVR 2 order. Um, that is all I'm saying. Um, I'm sure many of you are detectives out there and can work it out. Um, 
so stay tuned on the channel subscribe if you haven't already um really exciting things are coming and uh there are so many great games uh coming out uh, for psvr2 so many launch titles i mean resident evil village i am absolutely terrified for um not looking forward to it call of the mountains going to be great um uh the kayak game is the is is definitely one of my most anticipated and i'm really looking forward to gran turismo uh with the vr headset uh and everything else so um yeah um it's gonna be amazing so um we are so so close um we are so so close to the launch and i can't wait next week for us all to enjoy it together so uh with that said um, there's only one more thing before we get on with the main topic of the show. Um, and yes, I am going to be ignoring uh, everything that's been asked in the chat. I've said all that I'm going to say. Um, but um, the last thing I wanted to talk about was just, you know, huge thanks as always for your support. And this live show, um, there's a term at the company I work for because we're a startup company in cybersecurity. We're moving at a very fast pace. We're doing amazing things and we're not always getting everything right. And what I mean by that is like, there's just so many things we could be doing. Um, but, um, you know, you can't do everything and you can't let perfect be enemy of the good. And the saying that we use is that um, we are building an aircraft while it's in flight. And that's kind of how I feel with this, with this live show is I want to make sure that this live show is happening every Wednesday, even on days like today where I'm not really feeling it, because it's so important that we keep things going. Um, and uh, I just want to thank you for showing up every week. The fact that there are almost 50 of you watching right now is incredible. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and that although there are certain things I really want to do, so for example, getting guests as a, as a regular, uh, you know, as a regular feature on the show. That hasn't happened yet. I've had guests on the show, but not regular. And that's okay. That's okay that it's not happened yet. Although inside I'm like, oh, I wish I'd done it. I wish I'd done it. But the truth is that every week, little changes are happening. And sometimes they're really small. Uh, and, 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 and sometimes they're, you know, they're things that you might notice. And other times they're things that are happening behind the scenes. So a behind the scenes example is I discovered on YouTube the ability to edit live streams once they're done which means that that countdown clock at the start once the live stream is processed i'm able to chop that off um the way that that shows you know for you guys is last week was the first week where we ended the show and then we played the word game which meant everyone live could enjoy playing the word game but those that are watching on replay then actually see that it's a much shorter show to watch you know, instead of it being an hour and 20, it'll probably be just under an hour, maybe 50 minutes now. And, you know, that makes a huge difference. And other things as well is I've just worked, you know, got set up on my, uh, my background. So, like, this is the normal colour in the background. We've got a bit of sort of purple, a bit of teal, um, you know, white on that side. But then I've also got, like, the three main, you know, three main colours to go. So we've got red, uh, we've got green. I mean, the red looks more orangey, but we got red, we got green, we got blue, um, which is all kind of cool, right? Um, and uh, I actually, when I was doing the countdown uh, at the start of the show and I was sort of flicking between these, I've realised now, I've written down on my notebook. Um, is it going to show? Rotating. <laughs> is it going to show? Rotating dynamic colors for intro. So I'm now going to get it set up so that we can have, you know, the colors in the background changing constantly just for the intro. And then we could do this for like different parts of the show just to, you know, I don't know. These are these these are small things that make a huge difference. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> nothing happened. Colorblind games for the win. Oh, I have, to, I have to see if I can do anything that, that it makes a significant difference for those that are uh, colorblind, um, but I appreciate that. Um, but the other, there's a few, you know, and there's a lot of ideas that I've got um, at the moment for um, the future for the channel. And actually something I was sorting out was getting an icon for my channel, an MD icon. And I'm getting that signed off today. I've had an artist working on it. But I was also thinking about merchandise 
I think merchandise could be the next thing if I got some great merch done. Now, I could just get mugs with, you know, the uh the, the emojis of of the show on there. That could be kind of cool. But I'm actually thinking of getting some, you know, proper merch design. Um but then I need to work out how to get it produced because to be honest, merchandise is obviously a way for me to make money, but I actually would rather just have it hassle-free and done in a way that it's easy for you all to get your hands on it and even if I don't make a lot of money from it I'm just happy for people getting merchandise that relates to the show so um yeah um I think you know th these are these are things I'm thinking about and then finally um I have been reaching out to guests who are coming on future shows um and I might actually try and get someone uh a, a game developer to come on and talk about one of their games uh, as we experience the launch of PS uh vr2 so we will have to wait and see there all right cool uh so with that said um oh my god yeah mark was just saying i'm colorblind why is it whenever you tell someone you're colorblind the first thing they say is okay what color is this i have a, a really strange um color blindness story um I'll, I'll, I'll preface this by just actually saying what it is directly and I know a lot of you will go huh but I am colorblind when it comes to fire fire does anyone know what I mean by that um because growing up whenever I looked into a fire that was burning right in the bottom part it would always look lime green it always looked lime green, and I love the that the color, that lime green color of a fire. Um, but then when I was in secondary school, high school, and we were doing science experiments in chemistry, where you burn metals, and you know, depending on what metals you burn under the Bunsen burner, um, it creates a different color. And we were gathered round the teacher at the start of the lesson, where they show us what we're going to be doing, uh, and they burn a metal I think it was a metal they were burning and they said and as you can see it's changing color um you know what color is this and I said it's lime green and everyone laughed and I felt a bit like what and uh it turned out the color was red red was the correct answer and I went to get my eyes tested and I did all the color blindness tests and that and I passed them all but it turns out that when um, it comes to fire and flames, when most people see red, I actually see lime green. Um, so uh, it's a good job you can see teal. It is, it is a good job I can see teal. Um, so yeah, it was just a really weird moment of, you know, I'm seeing something different to everyone else. And then I, I, even as I'm talking about it now, I'm, I'm remembering all the times when I was a kid when I would be talking about, uh, you know, um, uh, I, I remember as a kid, I used to call like the flame Slimer from Ghostbusters because it had the same color in my eyes. And now I look back and think, most people must think I'm a complete, must have been like, what on earth is he on about Slimer in the fire? <laughs> but there you go. That's my strange uh, color blindness uh, story. All right, everyone. Well, now the main topic of today is around it's okay to be single, okay? And it's no biggie. I know a lot of you are going to be going, well, yeah, of course, it's okay to be single. But it, the truth is, for many single people, um, oh, sorry, just jumping back here. Those Bunsen burners, I nearly set my lab partner's hair on fire. Don't ask, it was an accident and a narrow miss. Well, last story about this. In physics, I wasn't in the class, but there was a guy, Christian, his name was. And you know the pendulum? He, he got a pendulum, the big metal ball. I don't like saying this. He tried to catch it in his mouth. And he knocked out his front teeth. Yeah. Oh, man, terrible, terrible. Anyway, on the subject of reasons why you might be single. <laughs> um, today is Singles Awareness Day. And I was unaware of this. I was unaware of the fact it was Singles Awareness Day, but I was aware 
of singles existing. I am single myself. I've been single for, I think, well over 12, 13 years now. Uh, and, you know, straight away people are like, oh, is that a choice? Or is it, what's, what do they call it? Involuntary, uh, like, uh, it's in incels, isn't it? It's like involuntary uh, celibacy or something like that. Um, and I think I think there's a bit of a mix there. It's like, for the most part, it's it's a choice but there are moments where you know i would be interested in finding a partner but then it's got to be the right person and i am very very picky that's just something that i am and it's not that i think i need someone who's absolutely excellent i think there might be a fear behind it in which sometimes i don't give things a chance when i probably should do because i'm worried about giving things a chance it not clicking and then wasting someone's time or being seen to have led someone on or things like that um does it have a much worse meaning i mean i know i i i i know i know it has a worse meaning in the context of the people that do horrible horrible uh things but um i, th I think that is what it stands for um and day after valentine's day it makes sense right yeah so here's a bit of a crash course uh about um, Singles Awareness Day, okay? We're going to call it SAD. <laughs> Singles Awareness Day, SAD. Okay, so SAD is, in fact, a humorous holiday that takes place on February the 15th every year, as you said, the day after Valentine's Day. And the purpose of SAD is to celebrate being single and to embrace the many benefits of not being in a romantic relationship, which I feel a bit weird saying because it's like, there's lots of great reasons for being in a romantic relationship. This is not about saying, ah, oh, screw those people that are in relationships. Like if people are in relationships and they're with loved ones, that's amazing. You know, love is important. And uh, yeah, I'm happy for anyone that finds that. Now, SAD originated as a response to the commercialization of Valentine's Day and the social pressure to be in a relationship and we'll come back to that point in a moment about the we'll talk about the commercialization of it i'm curious to know how many of you splash out on valentine's day and actually you guys can answer that now and uh the social pressures of being in a relationship but you know what let's just stop now and, and, and think about those two things are there people here that feel who are single or even when they look back and they were single and don't say it when partners are about oh yeah i got in this relationship because i felt under pressure but um oh and and there are a few more singles the days after valentine's maybe maybe <laughs> yeah um it, it's never been a better time to be single with the vr2 around the corner that's also that's also very true uh, they haven't known a psvr2 dating app yet um so they have a singles day sale here i mean i didn't really have a look i, I did see a lot of um Actually, to be honest, I think I did get a Domino's like Valentine's Day. I think, I don't know if they were doing it this year. I've seen it in previous years where a pizza place was doing heart-shaped pizzas. Which would be an awkward thing to cut. Um, my wife and I celebrate our first date, the 4th of Feb, so skip Valentine's Day. Yeah. And I, okay, so what Karina says is something that I've always felt, but I also understand it. It's like, I don't give a poop about Valentine's Day. You need to show love every day, not on a day defined by society. I guess it's a way to celebrate it. Well, this is also how I feel about like New Year's resolutions. Like, what, why, why wait until the 1st of January to make a change in your life? You could just do it now. But sometimes there's something to be said about having that focus point of, yeah, all right, let's... Because it, it might be a reminder to some people of like, you know what, we haven't actually gone out in a while. We've worked very, we've worked really hard in these jobs. You know, um, money's been tight. But you know what, Valentine's Day, let's do something. Although you could argue, well, let's do a Valentine's Day a week later when we're not being charged the Valentine's tax for, for doing it on that day. Um, this track says, I've never felt pressure to be in a relationship. If anything, I felt pressure to act like I was single when I had children. Interesting interesting um yeah show love every day a lot for that um <laughs> that's why i celebrate xmas every day uh just rename it what it really is hallmark profit day uh problem is not being single it's not getting any action which to be fair is a, is a great point because you can be single um and still have intimacy with people um absolutely uh 
hey, it's February 14th. Don't forget to love your, uh, that, that you love your partner. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's great. I mean, look, sometimes pressure is self-imposed. And I'll give you a great example of this. Um, whenever I go to weddings, for example, I go on my own. And I often sit on a table, uh, you know, when, when you have dinner, I, I sit on a table, you know, everyone's there with their partners and I'm always there by myself and it puts things in a perspective and you often get asked questions, you know, uh, or, or not even asked questions. You just feel this sense of like everyone else is getting on with their lives. I haven't. Um, and it's definitely something I struggled with for many, many years. Um I've now learned how to become content with my current situation and I think it makes me a much better person when it comes to actually looking for relationships because, um, wow, I could take this conversation in so many directions. So let me try and do this in three parts. The first part I'd say is a relationship is a multiplier effect and what I mean by that is if you have worked on yourself and you're content with who you are and you go into a relationship with someone else who has achieved the same, you're going to be a multiplier effect. You're going to like amplify that for each other. Whereas there are some people that feel unhappy in life, they feel miserable and they go into a relationship hoping it will fix that. Now, sometimes it does and we can't go with absolute. Sometimes it does fix things for people. But other times it gives a, a reliance on the other person that isn't healthy and means that when there are bumps in the road, they could end up being amplified and making things a lot worse. Um, so that's the first thing I was going to say is I've learned, especially in the last sort of four to five years after coming out of therapy and um, addressing some really bad issues in my life, which, by the way, stem from a, a story um, of abuse which is something I didn't really come to terms with until I went through therapy that I have wanted to talk about for maybe 10 years now. And I do plan on talking about it on one of these live shows. I might do it as just like a live show that will be called like me telling my story. And it's the story itself will take about 30 minutes to tell. So maybe I will do that on a future episode, but it's kind of a weird one to do as a live show because it's incredibly serious it's incredibly personal to me, but it's something that I know I need to do as a part of my healing. And although I feel I've healed everywhere, there's just one last part that I need to do. And that's me telling my truth to the world because it did have an impact. It meant I actually went a good solid 10 years without dating, without having any intimacy, um, things that I'm completely con you know, okay with talking about. And I talk about it because by talking about it, you might help people out there. And, and funnily enough, one of the reasons I was able to get help and therapy was because of someone who'd done a video on YouTube and had gone through the same thing that I did. Uh, there's some pretty remarkable extras to that story, which honestly, it could be done as a movie, but we'll get, we'll get to that uh, another time. Um, uh and and Hannah Hannah is 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 right. Um, it's about being ready, and 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 that's the thing. I felt ready about three years ago, but I wanted to be absolutely sure. Um, so I'll get to it. So so yeah. So contentness is really important. Okay. So contentness is really important. Um, I, I've talked about the multiplier effect, and what was the other thing I was going to mention uh, uh, about social pressures? Yeah, social social pressures are um, sometimes self imposed, and 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 the example I'd give is. My parents just want me to be happy. They just want me to be happy. But in my head, I would like to one day, if the conditions are right, to have children, for example. Yeah? Um, and, and that's not an absolute because for me, there is a sequence. I want to be in a strong relationship with someone. I want to have a strong home foundations and then and then I'm in a position to build uh, a strong family like that's the way I see it um but life doesn't work out always that way sometimes things are a bit bumpy and you make it work anyway I mean the great example is people that think I'm gonna have children once I can afford them and the one thing you always hear from parents is you'll never be able to afford them you just make it work and uh I think that's some really really great advice um but uh the, the pressure that I impose on myself is the idea of like, and I know for women, 
it's a lot it's a lot worse because you have your 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 body clock uh men have a lot more leeway but i don't want to be an old man unable to chase after his kids if i do have them um but uh yeah i i do think about um you know running against the clock i want to have kids so my parents have grandkids and for those of you that that know because i've talked about it on a previous show that um i found out um a few years ago that my dad uh has um leukemia uh chronic leukemia which although sounds worse than just regular leukemia i think is actually a better kind it's not a good kind overall which means um it's, it's a long-term thing uh, and they found it very early they're monitoring it but i know when i first had that conversation with my dad i got very emotional on the phone and something I said, which was probably, I don't know, I think it probably meant a lot to him to hear it, but I felt also like, yeah, my dad's probably feeling really shit about it at the moment. This is probably not going to make things any better. But I was speaking to him about the idea that, like, I want to have kids and I don't want to have to tell my kids how great my dad is. I want them to meet him because my dad is a, a great man. And so uh, that was something... Um, that I, you know, had to really think about. So yeah, sometimes you you put pressure on yourself. However, to bring this all back to the conversation of being single, in the last four years, I've I've become a real sense of contentness with it. And you know, every few months, I'll download dating apps. I'll give them a go. I'll get chatting with people, uh, and then I get bored of it, come off it, decide to just work on myself. And there is something to be said about when you don't look for it, you will find it. And um, it is an interesting dynamic about how all that works. And so I find that by being content and focusing, you know, on just like, yeah, I am who I am, I'm going to do a lot better for it. But I've just remembered the last bit I was going to talk about before moving on was uh, when I was in therapy uh, and I was talking about my concerns, you know, about being single and like, would I ever find anyone? Am I going to be alone forever? Because the reality, and I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, the reality is the universe owes you nothing. Although we have this sense of like, you know, this is the age you find someone, this is when you get married and that's when you have a kid. Those are all just like social construct. The reality is you go on your own path in life and things can happen whenever they happen. And there is a potential future where I end up not finding anyone and I do grow up and live an old life by myself. That is a very possible reality. It's not one that I want to have it's not one that I'm striving for but I'm open to the possibilities the reason I bring that up was because and this will make people laugh and I, I, I'm happy to mention it to make people laugh but I was telling my um, therapist that um, when it comes to like someone who really I related to in the sense of I was inspired by you're never I, I could give you a hundred guesses right now of who this celebrity is you would never guess it. You will never guess it. I mean, I'll, I'll give you a few minutes now as I go through comments of what celebrity I'm going to say. It's, a, it's an actor. It's an actor, but I don't think you're going to get it. Um, Karina says, I disagree with it. If you don't look for it, you'll find it. From a logical and statistical point of view, the more trial and error, the more chances of success. That is also, that is very true. Um, for me, it's I talk about like optimism. Uh, it's always good to keep your head held high because then if there are opportunities coming your way, you'll see them. I wouldn't necessarily say that's necessarily looking for them. Um... I guess, I guess, like, I'm not saying, like, to not look for them is not to say to not keep an eye out. It just means you're not proactively. But I, I agree. There are some good things for that. Um, uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Um, <laughs> fuck me. That's deep. What, what, which bit was deep, Jason? Roger Moore. <laughs> what? The universe owes me nothing. I'll not stand for this. It's against my nature as a narcissist. Um, please don't say me as we have talked about this. Let someone else have a chance, please. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. Right, okay. Uh, Elvis Presley, Keanu Reeves. Uh, the legend says, I think you've got to do what really works for you. My cousin is an introvert and has never really had a girlfriend. I see him weekly and he's in his element. That's great. That's great to hear. Right, I'm going to tell you. It is George George Clooney. George Clooney. Now, George Clooney is an actor I don't really follow. 
I've seen maybe a couple of his movies. I don't watch a lot. I don't really know a lot about him. But what I do know about him was that he married a human rights lawyer, a mole Clooney now. Uh, when did he get married? He got married uh, nine years ago. Okay. So he he got married when he was 52 years old. Sure, George Clooney works. Okay. Let, let, let me explain this. George Clooney is arguably, well, he's famous, he's rich, he's good looking, he's got charisma, he is a well established human being on this planet. He has a lot of good traits. Uh, I don't know him personally, he could be a terrible person that could be playing somewhat into it. I have no reason to believe that. But my point is, George Clooney has a lot uh, has a lot more going for him than I do at the point that he got married. And there was always this speculation about what he was up to because he was always single and always dating. And it's like he hadn't found the right person yet. But at 52, he did and he got married and he's in a very happy relationship. That, when I was in my late 20s, gave me hope because I thought if I'm beating myself up now at 29... You know, look towards George Clooney. It took him until he was 52. And then, you know, and things can happen at different parts in life. Now, I know the the sceptics of you will quite rightly point out, well, yeah, he got it at 52, but he did have lots of money, good looks, you, you know, all, all these things. You don't have that, Miles. So, yeah, maybe you need to be a bit more worried. But my point was I always looked at the fact that no, he went on his own journey and did it when he w it was right for him. And I don't know, that did actually play into my ability to find confidence uh, in myself. And that could be misguided, but the point is, it works. Um, but yeah, um, that is definitely something. Um, a well-established human being. I love that attribute. We'll remember to put that on my dating app if I ever go on one. <laughs> oh, man. Uh yeah, now we just need to become rich and famous movie stars. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, the universe provides air, water, sunshine, but it doesn't owe us much more. Um, but yeah, that the whole idea that the universe owes us nothing is not to be doom and gloom about it. And it's why I always talk about The Compassionate Mind. Um, it's a great book. It's all about, you know, having self-love, which is a big part of this conversation about being single. Um, and so actually, j just to go to this, that Singles Awareness Day, SAD, is a day to practice self-love and self-care. Um, but the, the SAD is to be associated with humour and lightheartedness. Um, but it's also a reminder that not everyone desires a romantic relationship. And I think this is a big part of this conversation, is some people don't want a relationship and that's fine. Like, that's a part of being content. I'm talking about contentness in the sense of I'm content with being single, hopefully one day connecting with the right person. But being content with being single is the idea of, no, I'm single and I don't want a romantic relationship and I'm totally cool with that. But it's also being appreciative of the fact that being single is a valid and fulfilling way of life. And that's also something else to, to be thoughtful of. After the Bill and Frank Last of Us episode, episode three of the series, I've come to terms with my perpetual singleness. Well, I don't know if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we did an episode on this channel called What Is Your Purpose? That was inspired from that episode. Um, it, it, it touched upon a, a lot of those things. Um, so look, there's a few things I want to talk about uh, on this topic because I am mindful of the time, okay? Here's the first thing. There is a difference from being alone and lonely. You can be alone and not feel lonely. I would say at the moment, I feel great. But sometimes I've been in a room with loads of people and that's sometimes when I feel the loneliest I've ever felt in my life. That's just how I am sometimes. Um, if, I'm not re if I'm going into like a party or an event and everyone's in their groups and I'm not, I can sometimes feel a bit anxious for that reason. So there is a difference from 
being alone and being lonely. Because being alone means you are by yourself, while being lonely means you feel sad or unhappy because you don't have companionship or support. And so it's important to note that many people choose to be alone. And that's okay. Being alone can be an opportunity for personal growth and reflection. Okay? And that's a really, really important thing. And so there are many benefits of practicing self-love. And when I wrote that in the description, I thought, oh God, is that going to sound wrong? Self-love. Because uh, I know there are some some dirty minds out there. But, you know, self-love is about treating yourself with compassion, with kindness, and with respect. And it's about recognizing your worth uh, and taking care of your physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. Uh, and, you know, some ways of practicing self-love include eating well, exercising, getting enough sleep, practicing mindfulness, and I think one of the most important ones, setting boundaries. Setting boundaries, not just for other people, but for yourself. And one of the boundaries could relate to everything else there, which is my boundary is that I'm not going to get everything right every day. I, you know, I might want to meditate every day, but if I don't, that's fine. That's a boundary I'm going to set. Don't let perfect be enemy of the good. I want to be sleeping eight hours a night. But you know what? The boundary's not going to be there if I happen to sleep less. That's okay. I next had on my notes actually for today's show was to share personal stories. And I, there's been so many personal stories uh, in the chat and I really, really appreciate it. And I, I always feel a bit unsure about whether to bring stuff on screen. Um, uh, but I assume that you're all happy for it to be brought up if you talk about it. Um, but I've shared you um, many of mine. But I would go back to... I think I've bought about 20 copies of this book over the years. Um, the Compassionate Mind uh, by Professor Paul Gilbert. Um, and half of it is... Um, Half of it is the science of compassion. And then the other half is um, is, is it, are, are like exercises. Um, and my goodness, there is so much gold dust in this. So much stuff that I have uh, highlighted. Um, I love this. I'm going to try and read it off the camera. So the so the the major context for a lot of challenges we face is to come to terms with the fact that we are evolved beings. This means we have emerged from the flow of life of this planet. We are the result of the struggles of millions of other life forms, 99% of which are now extinct. For any strategy or trait to evolve, it simply has to outcompete other designs. There is an old joke which goes, you don't have to run faster than the wolf. You just have to run faster than your friend. Um, there is so much great stuff in this book. Um, and it talks about the fact that life is brutal. And the fact that we are all here today on a live stream, enjoying each other's company, is a wonderful thing. And that comes from, you know, and, and thinking about that, is is a way of um of having self love. It's about being present, and uh, I I feel that doing this show is 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 full of love, and I'm so so grateful that I get to share this uh, with you every single week. Um, so many great comments uh, in this live show today, and if you're watching this on replay and are okay to share your thoughts, please do in the comment section below. And actually, those watching on the live show. Because uh, when I trim it and cut the intro off, it actually gets rid of the live chat. Um, would love to hear, hear your, your feelings. Um, there's just some times during the year, uh, Elastico says, uh, where I feel like everyone's happy in a relationship and I feel so lonely. The whole thing about not knowing if you deserve the love or not comes. I will just say to you right now, I've been there. I've been there with you. I, I have moments like that as well. Um... Definitely, in my darkest moments uh, where your mind goes there, sometimes lying in bed at night, I'm just like, am I ever going to find anyone? And uh, 
it's a completely natural thought, especially in the contrast of when, you know, especially at times of year like Valentine's Day where everyone is showing, uh, you know, photos with their loved ones, which I think is actually why on Valentine's Day it's good to speak out as a single person because you will reach out to other people and go, hey, look, and that's kind of why I wanted to do this live show about this today as a follow-up, which is there are many of us out there and it's totally all right. And so self-love and being content is such an important skill to uh, develop. Um, I think you should keep the chat. Unfortunately, if I cut the intro and stuff, it gets rid of the chat. I can't keep it. Um, I do like keeping it. Um, so maybe that's a decision I've just got to make. Um, yeah, it's, it's oh, I don't know. It's a difficult one. Not saying I'm going to make a decision on right now, um, but uh, yeah, that is an unfortunate thing uh, regarding uh, trimming the the, the, the beginning uh, and the end off. Um, and also throughout the show, I'm bringing up you know highlights on the uh, on the screen. Um, yeah, love to everyone. Yeah, I mean, I would love to keep the chat, but for me, it's a question of then I have to keep the um, the. 10 minute intro which is annoying um but maybe that's something that i do i don't know we'd have to think about it um <laughs> not like you can ask a woman can we practice mm, being in a relationship solidarity no pressure no, i've got no pressure but it's these are difficult changes i would love it if youtube allowed to keep the chat as well as trimming it um but yeah but to be honest the the live chat is in the live and you know you guys are a part of it um yeah people do have fingers that's true but also um yeah maybe maybe you're right maybe i do need to do that maybe i do need to do that sometimes the intro is less than 10 it is sometimes it is yeah yeah who needs love chaos says just eat chocolate and play video games um but yeah Anyway, I can't believe how quickly this hour has flown by. Um, what do we think, everybody? Uh, are we going to play the word game now? Um, all I would say is a huge thank you to everyone tuning in today. Um, I've really enjoyed doing this. I actually came into this exhausted, not sure if this was going to uh, go well, but it has. Um, I've got a lot to think about over the next week, but I'm really looking forward to having some time off work to recharge, but also to spend a couple of days because when I went to Bucharest last year, I took my laptop with me and I was planning on working on this live show. And when I got out there, I was like, no, I need to rest and relax. Whereas this time, I'm going to have a lot of days, although some of them are definitely going to be spent in virtual reality. But it's going to be nice to sort of go out for walks, come back, and then work on the live shows and, and get a lot planned for, for the rest of the year. I think that could be really, really exciting. So um, with all that said, um, I want to thank you all um hit the like button if you haven't already there are 51 of you watching right now thank you very much and 36 of you have said that you've liked it and i appreciate you as well um <laughs> at least me having not having a partner allow me to put money into psvr2 although if you had a partner you could have probably split it <laughs> uh but no it's always good to look on the positives uh lesser logic first stream is anyone else new here if you're new here i want to say welcome and i'm sure the rest of the chat will welcome you on um and i'm glad that you appreciated it because um as i said sometimes i'm not sure how it's going to go um but yeah it's uh it's wonderful to see many of you uh here uh oh wow give it up for paul everybody <laughs> Pull, pull, pull. He's just gifted five memberships. My goodness. You are amazing. Um, let's have a look here. Uh, let's give it up for Ruthless Metal was gifted by Paul. <laughs> Michelle was gifted. Welcome. Debar was gifted. Marcus was gifted. And Ultimate Carnage, the game cat, was gifted. Uh, so huge thank you Paul for your kindness uh, much love and anyone else click the join button if you want to become a member but at the very least subscribe hit the like button 
Stick around for the credits because I want to hear your thoughts, any final thoughts about the topic of today's show. But to be honest, you can say anything you want during this period and I will fo- feature all my favourite comments uh, on the credits. And then if you want to stick around for the word game, and I mean this to everyone watching right now, stick around for after the credits because we will be playing it then. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Love, respect, empathy, and adios. Till next time. Bye-bye. Have a great week. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate you all tuning in today. Uh, It was a good show. It was cool. Uh, Right, let's get the word game set up and see how we do. I definitely want to start getting some other games in. I mean, look, if Jackbox does become a thing, maybe that is something we could do at the end of some shows as well. I think that could really mix it up a bit. Could be fun. Could be fun. Um, And yeah, happy birthday to anyone else that's going to be celebrating over the next week. Uh, Let me... The other thing I've written down uh, that I was meant to do in the past week was um, doing um, a note on the credit saying stick around for the word game or, you know, for a game because, uh, you know, a lot of people drop off uh, at this part because they might not be paying attention to the chat or stuff like that. Um, Right, let's have a look here. Please don't be in Spanish which might sound horrible out of context, but genuinely, it's really hard to play a word game in Spanish. We got to level one, and we died there. Uh, All right, everyone. Let's just jump straight into this word game, shall we? That was the wrong one. That's better. Um, I do need to update that, though, with some of the new ones. But yeah, if you become a member... 
that's all the great stuff you get. To be honest, the Miles Dyer Live icon, it's so simple, but I love it. And I am I could so easily get that on a t-shirt. I think it'd look good on a shirt. Um, but anyway, it's time for the word game. We ready? Let's get some music going. It is a, it's a cool icon. Oh, and so, you were asking about this. I'll show you this at the end. Wow, we've almost done it already. What's the last one? It begins with S or a T. Is it Setter? It is. Woo! I did really well. That's probably the best round I've ever played on this. It's all downhill from here. Oh. Everyone's playing really good today. It's good. I was just seeing if anyone had put in the in the without parole discord what I mentioned earlier but no one has I was quite surprised <laughs> Oh Looper you overtook me well played well played Let me continue. What's going on? There we go. 
There's a fake letter. I'll make the light behind me go green when we're uh, we're in the clear. Alcohol. Wow. Which means Z is the fake letter. Do you not use Z? such a strong army in here of wordsters that's what i'm calling you wordsters Okay, dope is not being allowed. So D is D is the fake letter. Do you not use D? struggling now. It's all downhill for me. Playing some air drums. That was the only use I was going to be for that round. Look at this. Everyone's flying past me now. This is great. Yep, V is the fake letter. G is the hidden.
Looks like there's no, there might be only one four letter word being in G. Oh, V's the fake. Um. Well done, everyone. We're in the clear. Began. Began, of course, Hannah. Began, of course, of course. Well played. Well played, everyone. That means we're now going on to level 16. We're getting close to the evil levels now. Wow. No one's getting anything yet. Vacation. Wow, wow, wow. Which means... R is the fake letter. N is the hidden. Wow, we did it. We just snuck by. We just snuck by. Mark. Way over the 100 mark. Man, this is getting tough now. Album. Alberman. Alberman. Well done, well done. Um, am I going to get away with playing this song or are they going to copyright strike me? Let's find out. I love this song. One of the best pieces of music of all time. It won't be a copyright strike. It might just stop me from monetizing, but yeah.
It's Hydra City Act. Act, Act 2, I think. Or Sonic, Sonic, Sonic 3. Well, we're up to level 20, which we never get to. So we're doing it, guys. All right, we need serious music now. We need serious music. All right, we'll do pink clouds. Let's see if I can get, get a nice pink color in the background for this. There we go. Or else I could get it in the color of the uh, of the game. Like, yeah, we'll keep it pink. All right, let's do this, guys. Good luck, everyone. Pizza? Is pizza gonna be there? Mango? How about mango? I need to get the regular chat out. Or else I'm not going to be able to... Um, Oh, what did Mark get? Campaign. Okay, campaign. So Z is the fake letter. C is the hidden. I hope I got that right. Man, it's always tough. Campaign, camping. Oh, unlucky guys. But did very very well and Mark Mark do you know what your final score was do you know what your final score was you were so close dude 199 but give it up for Mark everybody absolutely smashed it I'm still at 31. I hit 31 at like level 6 and I didn't get another point since then. Absolutely abysmal. Well, there we go. Listen, everyone, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who stuck around. It was always good fun. And during that, I was like, maybe we should just keep the live show up with the countdown and, and keep the live chat there. Because you're right, it is nice when you're watching back to have it as a part of the show. So um, maybe I will start doing that. And I'll just try my best to keep the show shorter. But we will have to wait and see. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Tune in on Friday for PSVR Without Parole. It's going to be a really good one. You're not going to want to miss it. Uh, and during the day, I might do a live stream for my birthday. And uh, we can do some fun games and stuff like that. But then at the weekend, maybe at the weekend we do the, uh, the party games and that. Because it'll be a gaming live stream. Uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But I am going to get on with this edit now for work and then get some sleep. So I will wish you all a wonderful rest of your Wednesday, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. And then I just gotta press stop here.